Um, we'll open the hearing on House Bill 442 uh, relative to marijuana for medicinal purposes. I speak for the Attorney General. Of the estate. Did you put them on the hot seat? Uh, Ms. Echol from the Attorney General's office. Ms. Echo, could I ask you some questions about your testimony? Actually, I am late for an appointment. Okay, well, uh, I'll walk with you then. Uh, you mentioned about how a lot of the, the drugs coming into the state from uh, Mexico are now coming from California. Would you prefer that they come from Mexico, where the drug war is far more violent? Do you want New Hampshire money being funneled into that? Uh, are you also aware that higher quality marijuana, which is coming from California, is actually safer because it requires less combusted plant matter to reach the same desired medicinal effect? Why do you want to throw people in cages for using medicine? Hi, how are you? Uh, so I'm standing here with uh, David Woody, David Anthony Woody. Okay, and uh, Mr. Name Tony. You just gave some very powerful testimony in uh, the medical cannabis hearing before the Senate. And I was wondering if you could uh, just tell us a little bit about your story and why you came out today. Sure. Um, I served 22 years in the United States Navy. Um, my entire career, I was a flight engineer on a plane called a P-3 Orion. I was a senior NATOPS evaluator uh, for the end model manager for the EP-3 community, which is the spy plane version. So I've held a top secret security clearance. Um, I have a daughter who's a student on its inner second, finishing up her second year at Phillips Exeter Academy. Um, and I live in Exeter. Um, part of my career, I was stationed at a research and development command in Warminster, Pennsylvania. And that was right after Gulf War I in 1991. Um, and while there, the squadron or the command was tasked with developing protective clothing that would defend troops from chemical biological attack because Saddam Hussein had gassed some of our people during that war. Well, that suit has to work for all troops, and that include, includes fighter pilots who might be in a contaminated airspace pulling high G maneuvers in a dogfight or possibly have to eject. So I used to ride in the centrifuge, pulling eight, nine Gs in a big machine that spins around and around and uh, has the potential with, it has, a, actually can do uh, 13 Gs per second uh, on rate of, of uh, G-forces and can pull a maximum of 40 Gs, uh, which can literally crush a man to death. Um, at nine Gs, I was weighing about 200 pounds back then, that means I weighed 1,800 pounds. Uh, my entire, and the ejection tower is a 150 foot tall tower on a 79 degree angle, the same chair that's in a F-18 Hornet with uh, hydraulics instead of a rocket motor. You leave the ground at 500 feet a second and you stop at 150 feet. I've got a couple, about 300 hours in the centrifuge and about a dozen shots up the tower. My entire musculoskeletal system now over the years has degenerated. Uh, due to uh, degenerative disc and joint disease. Uh, I deal with a lot of severe chronic pain and I have to take morphine sulfate and Percocet and Trazodone and Meloxidan and whatever the hell else I got to take. Uh, Tizanidine and if I could have access to um, uh, an oxycodone, if I, could t if I could have access to medical marijuana, not only would it help me wean myself off of all these other drugs that are going to kill me someday, because my body adapts and the, the medication just gets higher and higher over time. It will eventually kill me. Uh, marijuana has never killed anyone. And um, if I can wean myself off of this stuff, I'll live longer. And I'll hurt less. This medicine works okay, but it's nowhere near as effective as medical marijuana. But I can't use medical marijuana in this state. And the reason I can't is because they don't have a medical marijuana law. If they did, the VA has a directive that 
uh, if you live in a state that has medical marijuana law on the books, they will not uh, interfere with your access to that if you go to a civilian doctor to get the prescription and you go somewhere else to get the meds. They won't provide you the prescription or the medication, but at the same time, because I live in a state without that access to medical marijuana, if I, had, if I use it and I pop positive on a, on a random urinalysis test, which I have to take at the VA, they will take away my my narcotic opioid pain medicines and immediately. And, if, and the minute I run out, I would probably, uh, I will go into withdrawals and, and I'd be lucky if I don't die. That's what they do in the states that don't have access to medical marijuana. It's cruel, but that's what they do. And I've just tried to give, uh, what's her name? I believe her name is Karen Echo. Karen Echo is uh, the process attorney general prosecutor or something like that in the state and I was so angry after hearing her testimony uh, because of her narrow-mindedness I had a packet of information that I walked back and handed to her and I said to her and I quote you take a look at this information and then I dare you to call me a criminal if I have to use medical marijuana and in that packet was a lot of the data I just told you about with the VHA direct federal hospital directive uh, and uh, pictures of the MRIs of my entire spine um, and, and a lot of other information in there that pertain to me. Also my totally and permanently disabled statement from the VA. And apparently she doesn't care. She's so focused on just prosecuting people that she doesn't have any compassion for others. And she's such a coward that when I turned around after my testimony, after having given her that paper, that packet of paperwork for her to look at, she, it was laying in my chair. She never looked at it. And that means she doesn't give a damn about the citizens of this state. All she cares about is prosecuting people to make her look good. And that's all I have to say. Well, thank you for speaking with me. Yeah. By the way, I have one more thing to say. And I, have, and I said this in, the, in my testimony. When I was 24 years old, I had a near-death experience. I died and came back. And during that near-death experience, I had an instantaneous complete life review. Uh, it wasn't just from inside my own body looking out my own eyes, knowing my own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I was literally put in all these other people's bodies that I affected in my life, good, bad, sad, or glad, and I knew their thoughts, I knew their feelings, I knew their emotions. Anything that had to do with how I affected others in my life, whether it was good, bad, sad, or glad, it's all there. And, uh, you know, I like to say God can do digital like nobody else can. Um, and uh, the only reason we're here on this planet is to learn how to love each other unconditionally, help one another, take care of this planet, and grow spiritually, and love God. And that's the simple way to live your life. And uh, this woman uh, is not doing that, that prosecutor. And I feel sorry for her when she has her life review because there has been, in the past two or three years we've been trying, or several years we've been trying to get this law passed, she's been fighting it all the way. And in that period, numerous people who had testi testified before are now dead. They're not here anymore mm. because of people like her. Hopefully one day Miss Eck will realize the consequences of her actions. She'll get her life review and I feel sorry for her when she's in my body. I really do because nobody should live with the kind of pain I live with every day. Nobody.